this is Lian Jiang. Everything is $5.99. That's the rule. Yo, you talk about Chinatown cheap eats, man. They don't get no cheaper than that. And man, if I had some fried chicken right now, I would just top this pandan waffle with the have some pandan chicken and waffles. Oh! Welcome to part seven of our Cheap Chinatown Eats series. Listen, we're trying to beat the Fast and Furious franchise. So in this Netflix special long video, we're gonna show you some under the radar bakeries, dessert spots. We revise some of our past opinions and we even find the cheapest of cheap eats. So sit back. Hit that like button, let the video run, cause this is part seven, New York, let's go. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Cheap Chinatown Eats part seven. Andrew, the series just can't stop, it won't stop. I feel like it's the series that gives back, like literally, like, you know, why, why stop doing this? We need to eat, I wanna try more foods, I wanna support more businesses, I wanna tell you guys more about it. And to open up, we have to make amends. We have to come clean. Andrew, you know we had to open up at KST Gong Sik Tong because somebody approached me in the street physically and said, hey man, you gotta give it a fair shake. That's one of the best spots in Chinatown. We did feature KST in a previous Chinatown Cheap Eats video, but you know, the situation and maybe the, the stuff we ordered, it, it wasn't the best representation. Everything here is about $10 and under. Let's check it out. A few things that we got were like maybe 11 to 12, but Totally. Those, those are the things with shrimp in them. Yeah, okay. and they are gigantic. You totally could share them between two to three people. Andrew, open up with the Saitasi. Saitasis are fried French toast. It's a style that's really unique to Hong Kong, but they do two different versions here uh -huh. that are very, very difficult to find. Okay. This one has salted egg yolk in the middle, and this one has Ovaltine. Okay. To the David. untrained eye, Andrew, that almost looks like a grilled cheese. David, David, pour, pour, pour the syrup on. Just pour it on. You guys, if you're obviously watching your diet, you have sugar restrictions for whatever health reason, don't do that. Hey David, notable that they brushed it with Ovaltine, but there's actually this pool of melted butter right in the middle that's sinking in. Saidalsi, HK French toast, salted egg yolk. For me, I'm dipping it in this condensed milk, mm, chocolate mix. Mm, wow, oh my God. Wow, shout out to every spot that we've tried, but you know, we didn't give this a fair, Try, we didn't give this a fair presentation. Moving along here, Andrew, I made sure that I got all the most unique Ta Tan Tang. Huh? Ta Tan Tangs are the mixture between Hong Kong and British culture. These are grapefruit wings. Grapefruit. Grapefruit, grapefruit honey chicken wings. Say no more, bro. Wow, kind of spicy, salty. I've never had this. It's a very fruity ring, wing. It is bursting with grapefruit flavor. I can tell you it's a small wing, but tasty. This is a fake shark fin soup. Obviously, shark fin is a little bit of a controversial item because they do kill sharks uh, to get the shark fin. This is That's why it's imitation with this. Uh, they use a very certain type of fun si, and you almost end to the layman. You cannot tell the difference between fun si and the strings from a shark fin. Guys, most shark fin soup that you get at a standard restaurant is going to be the imitation one. All right, the next item is kind of a new item that you're starting to see, of course, with this whole salted egg yolk trend. This is a salted egg yolk fried rice with fried shrimp on top. Now, this was $11, but okay. I did get the extra egg. That was another dollar. Okay, so, okay. So, you know, with the accoutrements, you're in the upgrades, you're getting maybe towards like 13 bucks. Just go for it, I'm man. just gonna eat it out. Eat it out of the bowl. Eat it out of the bowl straight. All right, so what's really unique about this fried rice is not only the salted egg yolk flavor, but they actually mix in crispy rice into the fried rice. So there's like a difference in texture. So you kind of get this rice crispy feeling or this bow tie fawn vibe. And I know a lot of spots are doing that. Coming up to the pasta noodle round, David, you have stir fried instant noodles. And then I actually have an actual HK pasta style dish. Andrew, these are actually, I believe, Thai style pork chops. Chao Kung, I mean, which is stir fried instant noodles. Mm -hmm. You are looking at a more classical Hong Kong interpretation of Italian special carbonara. Mmm, HK, HK pasta. I can't even tell that I'm eating a Chinese dish right now. I really cannot tell. I'm not comparing, but for that much carbonara or whatever pasta that's designed to imitate truffle pasta, this one, based off the original version, this is way better. Last but not least, we have our final round here, kind of going along with this Gong Sik Tong KST, which is a traditional Ta Tan Tang, but elevated. I've got a traditional beef tomato, but over macaroni. Ooh. So these are two dishes you would find at a Hong Kong cafe, but not necessarily mixed together. Guys, here I have a instant noodles with white cream sauce and chicken steak. You know, I'm just gonna go ahead and call this the KST Chicken Alfredo. Elevated, elevated classics. classics. That's not mm. bad at all. 
huh? But after being, you know, I've grown and eaten so much like Sichuan food that I, I could use a little bit of a kick, even a little bit more black pepper. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of this white pepper. Boop, 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 boop. I almost wanna say elementary flavor. Uh-huh. But elevated. So but, not, not departing from the lane of what like a fourth grader would like. Yeah, and, and that's actually a lot of Hong Kong cafe food. It does kind of hit you in those simple, youthful taste buds that you had growing up. And it's, it's not necessarily supposed to rock your world, but it's supposed to be just a good version of those kitty taste buds, to be honest. Actually, you guys, my favorite thing absolutely that I had was the Ovaltine French Toast for 550 here from KST. I've got to say, um, let me augment my previous statement, not, not take back anything, but just add to it that I think KST is a must visit. Guys, just because at one part of the video, you know, it was bad timing. Guys, this pork chop over stir fried instant noodles, it is delicious. This is one of the best versions I've ever had here at KST, guys. KST on Bayer, man, let's keep it moving. One of the things I love about Na Trang, Andrew, is that it totally fits within Cheap Chinatown Eats because they have a ton of stuff that's $10 and under. But if you want to push towards a $20 price point, they got stuff like this special calamari that I got to tell you, Andrew, tastes like Japan. Wow. I, the last time I ate something that tastes like this calamari was Japan. So it's $13 for this plate, so that doesn't really fit within our Cheap Eats, but this is at the same spot. You can get a $7 plate. All right, guys, and one of my favorite dishes of all time is the Jazo, AKA the Vietnamese egg roll. So here- Under 10 bucks. Under 10, this whole plate for six of them is only $7. These shrimp taro cakes, which we're gonna eat in the same way, is only $8. Oh, you, then, do, you know what, you do one of the Jazos, I'm gonna do one of the shrimp taro cakes. Okay, okay. Oh, and believe it or not, you know, this is my very first time having a shrimp taro cake wrap. Appetizers. Mm. Yo. I discovered a new Vietnamese appetizer that I really enjoy. It is the shrimp taro cakes from Na Trang. I had the right amount of shrimp, the right ratio to the taro. Sometimes when people do taro things, it's like overly taro. Of course, Andrew, they have the staple Vietnamese items that you come to for any pho shop. I got a calm rice plate, calm is rice, I believe, in Vietnamese. Uh -huh. um, everything looks really well. I, I got to say this, Andrew, I was impressed. I thought Na Trang initially was kind of like, you know, there's a lot of cheap Vietnamese spots in every city in America, right? right. But this is elevated one notch. Bro, this pho is loaded up with everything. You have meatballs, you have your tendon, you have your fatty flank, um, and it's really packed with a lot of meat. Right, so, which is why it was $11. Yeah, right? for $11, this is, a, this is a good deal. This is gonna get you full, because Tristan, you can get cheaper bowls of pho, but they're actually not gonna have as much meat. Oh, they're not, and this? This is an extra $250. $3. In fact, I'm just gonna skip that. Go straight to the meatball. Yo, that's beefy and rich. I think that this plate right here is a little bit more unknown because uh, you've got the grilled pork chop and you've got other varieties of pork mm -hmm. as well as the egg patty, egg pork patty. So this is the Kam Sun Bi Ka. I don't know how to say it, guys. I've always been a fan of the pork patty egg because it kind of reminded me of a tamago mixed with like a meatloaf. I don't know, it might be inspired by the quiche. Okay, our last dish is the mi kuang. Now, this is a dish that oftentimes is used like a, a thicker yellow noodle. In this case, they're using the thick one ton noodles, but it has a lot of stuff going on. It has the fried shrimp, it has the nice squid that we also saw fried earlier in the appetizer, and then this nice side of soup, which we can pour in and dip as we please. So, man, let me go in on this real quick. Dip it. And for one of our last and final dishes, we've got their version of the bun mi here. Andrew, I know that they've incorporated a few elements of the sub sandwich here. Some people don't like that, but for me, Andrew, personally, I've got to say, I like it. All right, guys, this is the classic bun mi. Listen, guys, I ain't saying that bun mi is exactly how it's done in Vietnam, but it's delicious. Like we said, they have some higher end dishes. I know that, you know, 16 is a little bit out of the price range, but if you think about it, Andrew, it's still way cheaper than if you got salmon at another restaurant. Exactly, look at these pieces of salmon, we're just gonna show you. Ooh, caramelized, caramelized salmon. salmon. Andrew, we're from Seattle. Bro. I have a salmon quota quotient that I need to hit. That's why I always get this dish. Bro, New York salmon, I'm messing with, I might be Atlantic salmon, but that is so good. It's really spicy too, actually. Of course, you know, any chance you get to see a piece of the 626 in New York City, which by the way, Andrew, I've got to say, is becoming more common. Yeah. So this restaurant, Na Trang, is actually partnering with these people out of Rosemead, California. You know, the 626, and they are doing a lot of sugarcane juices out there. So here we are, sugarcane in New York. I got a sugarcane watermelon. Ah, 
It's that good sweet. It's not that sugary sweet. It's that sugar cane sweet. <sighs> Natrang has the whole range, everything from, you know, your $7 appetizers to your $15 entrees if you want to get fancy. Um, it, it, it overall does fall into our cheap eats. And guess what, man? It's one of the best Vietnamese spots in Chinatown. Come and get the watermelon sugar cane from Rosemead. All right, so we've made it to Division and Eldridge, guys. We've passed by this spot a lot, but we're finally going in. This is Lian Jiang. Everything is $5.99. That's the rule. Yo, you talk about Chinatown cheap eats, man. They don't get no cheaper than that. Hey, can you help us write four things? Yes. Can you help us write four Sort of like a Chinese cafeteria style, and a lot of these spots are based in a Taiwanese or Fujianese style. So totally makes sense now that I think about it. I mean, they got everything that's going to appeal to everybody uh, and also stuff that's only going to appeal to, you know, people from the community. <laughs> Okay. He won. I only gave him six dollars. He didn't want any more. Okay. Right, you guys, this was six dollars. You've got teriyaki chicken, a gigantic fried chicken leg, a piece of salmon, some fried potatoes, some tulo. Okay. Uh, I'm venturing to try the salmon. I think some people would advise me not to, but I'm going. Let's do it. I'm going for the potato. Sam is fine. Yeah. Way better than I thought. The food at Lianjiang has exceeded my expectations. Yo, guys, I'm not gonna lie. You know, I, I didn't know what to expect while walking in, but this is this is gonna be the test, man. You got Inner. this. So you're telling me this is cheaper than King King Food Court because it's six dollars, bro. Six dollars and you got fish and chicken and potato, guys. Lianjiang. $5.99 for everything. I mean, that was a gigantic drumstick. You'd almost look at that and go, wait, what type of chicken was that off of? Personally, I think the other items were done a little bit better, but this one is cooked all the way through, clean tasting. Not gonna lie, man, I'm super impressed. I'm glad we checked it out. $5.99 for everything here at Lian John. Dude was real chill too. All right, you guys, next up on Chinatown Cheap Eats Part 7 is XO Taste. Now, they have things that are like $30 on the menu, $40, but they also have a pretty significant amount of things that are $10 and under. And this is not your traditional Cantonese spot. I mean, they're, the owner here, who is also the chef, I mean, whatever they want to come up with, they got ideas, and then the chefs make it. Here, Andrew, we've got almost like a Sichuan or a Hunan wow, sort of like spicy beef over a Tung Yo Bing. This is not really a traditional yeah. dish. It almost looks like we're making a taco here. These, for example, Andrew, are eel wasabi pot stickers but they're more done in the gyoza Japanese style. Right here, we've got a Korean lamb meat rice bowl. So lamb meat, Koreans don't necessarily eat that that much. They're more pork and beef, but we kind of mix Chinese culture with Korean culture. But the flavors, uh, this even has like a tiny bit of gochujang in it. Moving on here, we've got a Chiang Mai noodle. Chiang Mai is Northern Thailand. Andrew, you've got something that's more conventionally Cantonese, but still got a twist to it because it's almost your crispy chow mein style using egg noodles, but with ao lam on top. So I'd say this is what? Maybe 70% traditional, 30% modern yo and let me tell you this guys exo whether it's exo taste or exo kitchen those are the only that's the only group of restaurants that i've seen that is literally around the corner from each other that serves almost the same menu as each other starting off we got the scallion pancake with some spicy beef right here no no just eat that like a taco bro just eat the whole thing yeah yeah and why don't it. you think more people just wrap dishes in tung yo bang all right while you do that andrew i'm going to be having one of these mm. eel gyozas and David, I want to say everything on this table is actually under $10, minus with the exception of one of them. Crazy, this was teriyaki eel inside of a fried one ton. Hunan beef taco, not bad. All right, you guys, so we are looking at a Thai noodle and we are looking at a Korean bibimbap bowl, or at least wow. their take on it. Yeah, I mean, this is like a Korean uh, bulgogi bowl, I would say. It doesn't really have any of the classic panchan, but it does have the egg rice. Thai noodles. Korean rice bowl, $9.95. Guys, look at these grill plates we have. We have the chicken steak, $8, with black pepper sauce. And then here, you have Iberico pork for $8.95. Korean beef and rice, not that much Korean flavor, to be honest, but it's still good. The Thai noodle, do I think Thai people would identify it as authentic? No, but do I think a Thai person could even appreciate this because it's tasty? Yes. All right, moving on here at XO taste, Andrew, you've got the Iberico pork. I know that this is something you were really interested in because the last time you heard they were making chashu with Iberico pork, which is from Spain, it was at Moth 32, which yeah. is incredibly expensive. Iberico, Iberico pork. pork. That's fire. 
It's good. All right, David, here we have the classic kind of Hong Kong cafe chicken steak. And I know that when people think chicken steak, sometimes they're thinking like chicken fried steak. This is uh, low key one of my favorite dishes to get. I, I don't know how healthy it is, but it doesn't seem too unhealthy either. I mean, it's just chicken and rice. Black pepper, pepper chicken. chicken. I give it an XO taste. Their sauce is very peppery. Way more spicier and peppery than other sauces, guys. I'm loving this dish. This is a good version of it. Andrew, last but not least, this came in at $14. So this was one notch. You know, aye, I want to say aye. like $3 outside of the ultra cheap range. But look at the amount they give you. Split it amongst two people. That's $7 each. This is our lamb tong with vegetables over crispy noodles. Beef stew over, over crispy, crispy noodles. noodles. I think it's really interesting because that's a very conventional combination, but they just switched up some of the steps in the cooking process, you know, swapped them out for other things. And that actually did change the complexion. It allowed the beef stew flavor to be a little bit more reduced and dense and uh, just more intense. So that is an intense beef stew flavor. And the crispy noodles, them being egg noodles, you know, less volume, just less mass. I mean, for that much beef for $14, that's still a really good deal. All right, you guys, here at Exo Taste, my favorite things personally, with the two grilled meat plates. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually still gonna go with the Chiang Mai noodle soup. Oh. Because I felt like it's difficult to kind of do the Thai flavors. Felt like they, they pulled it off. Like I said, I don't think Thai people would find that authentic, but I think that they would totally find it tasty. I think you guys cannot go wrong between Exo Kitchen and Exo Taste. Obviously right now, only Exo Taste has an outdoor dining, but Exo Kitchen is still open. I say, come here, try it. You'll see a bunch of stuff on the menu that you've never seen before. Real funky. All right, everybody, continuing Chinatown Cheap Eats Part 7. We're continuing with desserts, and the desserts are such a great deal out in Chinatown. We're outside on Grand Street and Allen at minus Celsius. They sort of survived the Thai rolled ice cream wars. Yeah. I am telling you the egg waffle and the Thai rolled ice cream is the best. There's a reason it's still around where a lot of the other spots fell by the wayside. Hey, Lil, come here. Let me introduce you to Jimmy. He's one of the hardest working guys. It's just him here hey, at the Jimmy. shop. Hey, Jimmy. Good Jimmy, seeing Jimmy. you, bro. My Celsius ice cream. We made fresh raw ice cream, and we have Hong Kong style egg waffle. Hey, he's, he's, what Jimmy is doing right here is he is making one of the best egg waffles I've ever had in Chinatown. Jimmy, you make your egg waffle kind of chewy. It almost feels like mochi a little bit. Yeah, inside chewy, outside will be crispy. Inside chewy, outside crispy. <laughs> Inside Chewy, outside Crispy. My gosh, first of all, Jimmy what gotta put a that? design on there. Hey! He did graffiti, he doing street art. See, Andrew, I could tell why Minus Celsius survived the wars. Jimmy is top 10 percentile hardest working people in New York City. Look at that upper body strength, lower body strength, core. Oh yeah, dress that up, dress that up, Jimmy. Oh my God! Jimmy, you outdone yourself. I'm not gonna lie, man. Yo, Andrew, since we came here last time four years ago, it leveled up. He's gonna torch the marsh beast. Oh my, yeah, do yeah. it. Yeah, hit me. All right, you guys, this was $11 here at minus Celsius, $3.50 for the egg waffle, $7.50 for the ice cream. Andrew, I challenge the people to find a better priced dessert in all of Manhattan. Look at what you get. But it's not just falling apart, it's holding together because it's stretchy. Look at this corner right here. That is some mochi. Oh my gosh, it's ripping, it's stretchy. And what does it mean that uh, a spot that, where we know the guy is still alive and kicking? I think it goes to show you that he's hardworking and the product is good. Banana, I'm getting ice cream, I'm getting this chewy waffle right here. You know, the guy down side, look at that. $11, can't do much better than that. All right, what would be a trip on Hester Street if we did not stop by one of our favorite Asian dessert chains in the world, Bamboo Desserts? It's in New York now. You know, they had them in Philly, I think Boston, but of course it comes from the West Coast. Let's go see what they got. Hey guys, we're from Manhattan Bridge Ortho. Follow our food page on MBO Office Eats. Hey, how ironic is that? Dental orthodontics, but a food page. Yep, is it dessert though? We have half desserts, half savory food. We got everything, man. We know what to eat. Hey, just brush your teeth after you eat all that food. Exactly. That's all. Guys, Bamboo finally made it all the way from, I believe, San Jose to New York City. Man, we're so happy that they opened up a location here. Um, we love the number one with, of course, substituting the Long An with the lychee. That's, That's the way to go. It's $8. Very pricey drink, but very worth it. I've seen them make one in before in the back. It's a very deliberate 
process. I can see why it costs that much. Hey guys, this Pandan waffle is nothing to mess with. It's very dense. It's warm, fresh, made to order. You got the cream in the condensed milk. And heavy Pandan flavor. Only five bucks, guys. Panda. Man, this will fill you up for five. This is actually one of the better waffles you can get for five bucks. David, you know you get a fresh made waffle with this much flavor anywhere else, it's gonna be more than five. Panda waffle. Pretty decadent right here, man. Would you say that bamboo is one of the most underrated dessert spots? Definitely one of the most underrated dessert spots in Chinatown, given something unique to the area. And man, if I had some fried chicken right now, I would just top this pandan waffle with the have some pandan chicken and waffles. Oh! Of course, Richie Lee was the first person to put me on to the number one with the uh, lychee substitution for the longans. You guys, $8. All right, you guys, we are in front of the legendary Kung Fu Tea, Andrew. At one point, I want to say five to seven years ago, Kung Fu Tea reigned supreme. Oh man, that was like the boba shop. That was pretty much the only cool spot that everybody was getting their boba from. Obviously since then guys, boba has exploded and now there's so much more uh, competition, but also just bigger so, market. So Kung Fu Tea is actually headquartered in New York City, but it is run by people who are uh, Taiwanese. It's a, it's a pretty, I guess, in tune with the Taiwanese pop culture experience boba shop, would you say? Yeah, and it definitely feels like your everyday boba shop, uh, not one that you would post up for hours, obviously, and do a school project, but it's really just a grab and go. How important do you think it is in this time where everybody has boba guys and is trying to do streetwear boba shops, hip hop boba shops, how important is it that someone's keeping with the, I guess like Wang Ba, like, internet cafe like yeah, i guess yeah, what yeah. you want to say like cosplay like taiwanese style of uh pop culture which is still around but now asians have sort of like diversified into all these different archetypes i mean i think there's space for all types of boba shops and uh, i think spots like this are never going away however i will say this 10 years ago it was like tap x that was around but now i think the the standard will just be kung fu tea one of the really interesting things about kung fu tea is they pretty much take the hot item from every other boba shop andrew and they kind of imitate it and I'm not saying they're copying. I don't think anybody owns intellectual property rights on any boba flavors. But Andrew, that is a pumpkin spice boba with pearls in it. That's crazy. You and mean this, pumpkin spice milk tea? Yeah. And wow. this is a pumpkin spice latte milk tea with pearls. Pumpkin, pumpkin spice, spice boba, boba here at Kung Fu Tea. Pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. Wow, I was going to say it's, it's pretty sweet, but it's pretty good. <clears throat> I'm not even a PSL fan. All right, continuing our dessert crawl through Chinatown. Guys, we're on Allen right here, and we're in front of Soft Swerve. It has some of the best soft serve ice cream in Chinatown. Uh, we know the owners. Shout out to Mikey and Jason. Um, they're still alive and kicking, doing really good stuff. I would say that Soft Swerve was a completely different style than the other ice creams because it was essentially more like a McDonald's. Except they have a lot of Asian flavors, ube, matcha, black sesame, you name it. Most aesthetic sauce swerve we possibly can. I'm thinking, what, matcha on the bottom, ube on the top, and then let's do some toppings. I love the fact that they really incorporate a lot of Asian themed flavors here at sauce swerve. I think a lot of people try to do it, but it's one thing to attempt to do it. It's another thing to do it the right way and execute it properly. Oh my goodness, that is aesthetic. Soft Swerve NYC, guys. All right, guys, here for $6.50, I got a half ube, half matcha, strawberry crunch with mochi on the side. Guys, this is just a work of art. Soft Swerve. Mmm. Say this about Soft Swerve, guys. It's delicious, but you gotta eat it quick because it is soft and it will melt. Mmm. And we're in front of Bibble and Sip. They have the original location in Midtown. This is the Chinatown one, started by Chinatown guys, second generation ABCs, wanted to do a modernized take on East meets West, West meets East. You know what I love is that their whole concept is East meets West, and they're actually in this location, and on this part of Hester, you can literally see it. The businesses turn from like Chinatown businesses to more Little Italy businesses on this turning point right here. Let me tell you, you can see some very interesting things. A milk tea cloud, First of all, aesthetic, yeah. cute, very 2020, and then apple lychee pie. Wow. Not just apple pie. See, just that's what we're talking about, the See, East meets West ABC 2.0, You know that this spot is elevated because the people, the owners, the main chef, the creative behind it all, they have like a high-end culinary background. They went to school for this. Bibble and sip, let's go. Um, go ahead and why don't you tell us what is the concept behind your spot? So our spot is basically a fusion of traditional Chinese bakers and with a French and modern flair. Our boss does have a French culinary background. He wanted to create a place where he could bring flavors of the traditional Chinese bake shop 
with the modern times. All right, you guys, we are here at Bibble and Sip. This has got to be, in a way, like the most elevated bakery in Chinatown ever. Yeah, and especially the fact that it is ran by second generation Chinese. I mean, I just, I just think they took it to a whole nother level. And the thing is, uh, it's actually really affordable when you compare it to other like fancy cream puffs, you know, like a lot of people are gonna be like, okay, well, I can get a, uh, you know, ham and egg sandwich for 275. These cream puffs are 450. But if you really analyze it and actually compare these cream puffs to a comparable cream puff that's seven or eight dollars, mm -hmm. it's super well priced. For me, Yo, I'm gonna start off with the lychee apple pie. Yo, I gotta try this cloud. Kind of hard. It's cracking. I don't even know what to expect. I didn't know if this was gonna be soft or what. I've got a apple lychee pie. And I got a boba cloud foam. That's really good. Mine is a 4.5 out of five. Wow. All right, here, Andrew, I've got a matcha cream puff. You are looking at, I believe, a Earl Grey, that's black sesame, and that's boba creme oh brulee. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Cream is not too sweet. It's really thick though. Fits perfectly. This is the creme brulee milk tea cream puff. This is the black sesame joint right here. Oh, wow. Wow, yours looks interesting, man. Yeah. I didn't expect it to look like that. Like we said, they are blending a lot of traditional Cantonese flavors here, black sesame. Guys, like I said, Bibble and Sip does not get enough credit. Let's go. Mmm. Wow. So, David, you're saying that cream puff really embodies the East versus West, the traditional black sesame flavors with, you know, the Western form. You know, for me, I'm not even that into Tong Yun. This might have been my favorite version, bro. I think they were all good, but that one's crazy. Wow. David, um, I know Bibble and Sip doesn't just want to do cream puffs. They're actually looking to do more brunch foods in the future. This is one of the earlier items. This is a egg sandwich. This is, but this is specifically an egg sando, meaning that you have a slice of soft boiled egg right there along with your egg salad. All right, guys, egg sando. A lot I like of celery. I love the mixture between the hard boiled egg and the chopped up egg. Last but not least, Andrew, as far as the savory sweet items go, this is a combination. We've got a creme brulee pot. Wow, and that's like XL size, man. That's gigantic. That's probably two to three times the size of a regular pot. Tot. Pot. Tot. That's good. Mm, Honestly, actually, that was really good. This is my five out of five. This is my five out of five. This is you might I might have to. You only I might got have one to. five out of five though. I might have to. You know, I think it is really difficult to do fusion items sometimes. Sometimes it's like how much of the West do you put in, how much of the East do you put in? But this is a elevated yin yang, which is half coffee, half black tea, sort of like a very classic Hong Kong drink based off yin yang. I mean, but shout out to them, Bibble and Sip, back in the community bringing you guys. I mean, I think a lot of people love the idea of French pastries and they're hard to get. They're very expensive. So shout out to Bibble and Sip for making us feel comfortable. All right, you guys, our next dessert spot on Chinatown Cheap Eats Part 7 is Kulu Desserts mixed with smooth ice cream. So it's like a this is, duo no, spot. It's, it's a double branded spot. It's a collaboration. Kulu is originally from Flesh and Queens, so they've made it out there and now they're making it in the city, guys. So we frequent this spot a lot because personally, I like the Asian flavors of ice cream that they got. It's almost like a, a thicker gelato. It kind of reminds me of the Concretes a little bit at Shake Shack. Mm, okay. So for me, I have jasmine milk tea right here, which is uh, pretty much your main milk tea. Yep. That is jasmine. I have a matcha. You have a ube. That ube is banging. Yo. And then you have a durian. Yo, the durian is banging here too, guys. All right. I personally, personally think this is one of the best ube ice creams here in Chinatown. What I love about this durian is that I can smell it. Like you can smell the funk in the ice cream before you eat it, and that's how you know it's real. They really pack it out with real fresh durian. Mmm. Four dollars and fifty cents for a single scoop, but I'll give you guys a tip: if you guys go to Full Grand next door and buy something, then you get Bogo buy one get one free here. Oh, hey, and also another uh, very Asian and Hong Kong flavor that they have here that we didn't get is Ovaltine. You can find it in the fridge. Oh, dude, they got some other Hong Kong flavors. Uh, I think salted egg yolk. They have tofu. Sometimes, uh, yeah, the tofu fa. Sometimes I think I heard they're doing a don tot one. Owners are from Hong Kong and Macau. Check out Kulu Desserts on Grand Street. Andrew, we are in front of the King Wu. Uh, I've seen this pop up recently from Hubei, China. Yeah. Imported now into Flushing. Andrew, we got one in our hometown of Kent, Washington. Hey, shout out to the Great Wall Shopping Mall. Guys, we're on Walker Street. This is kind of a low-key street in Chinatown on the kind of exterior of it. 
And here you have the Hubei street food. Like my man over here said, what's your name, bro? Oh, GQ. GQ? Yes. GQ, man, that's a cool name. All right, GQ, can you like help us pick out? Definitely looking more at the pig trotters, oh. more of the duck wings and the beef shank. Yo, and everything here kind of has this very special King Wu like Hubei spice on it, right? Exactly. Just over like 20 plus spices to it. Like two pieces each, yeah. Yeah, you don't got it. That's good, that's shed. good. We need three duck wings. Th that's good on the pig trotter, okay? Right. Can I get a little bit of the, the tripe? Tri the small tripe? Yeah. Duck wings are three duck wings. Yeah, oh. duck wings is fire. Okay. Duck wings is fire, that's okay. me, man. Let me go try out the duck neck. Okay, the duck yeah, neck. Okay, her duck neck. I didn't even... The duck, you know, duck neck is... We have that food right here, outside, right next to the bread. So, oh, okay, so we have to. Some of you guys, if you guys came to King Wu, you guys would make different decisions on what, you know, spiced animal parts to get, but that's for you to decide. I made my choice. All right, you guys, we are at King Wu. I'm starting off with the lotus root. I wanted to start off you want light, to start, you know. Right, I'm gonna start off with the uh, dogan. Dried tofu right here. Man, this Hubei spice is so difficult to, to, to really describe. It's sort of a shang la. So I think initially a lot of people are gonna feel like it's Sichuan flavor because it has a little bit of um, peppercorn. Yeah, but it's a little bit more like a Hunan, but it's Hubei, so. All right, yeah, you see the peppercorn right there. Woo! I'm gonna eat it, I'm gonna eat it. I'm Let gonna... me tell you guys this. Mm. The King Wu stuff, I'm looking for a duck wing personally. I like tripe in my pho, so this is the little tripe right here. Did you guys know? And what, what do you want to say to the people out there who are just like, yo, that is just like gross? You gotta taste it. I'm not saying it's not weird at all, okay? I'm not saying it's 0% weird. I'm just saying you gotta taste it. All right, you guys, uh, this is the, the duck wing, probably the most, what, unoffensive thing they have. Yeah, yeah, that's probably the most common part of a meat, part of the animal that people are gonna eat. But this one, the duck neck, this is in the name of King Wu and the characters, all right? So uh, duck neck is something I've ordered at the restaurant before. You eat it like this. I mean, it's good. I mean, everything has a similar flavor. Obviously, it's all braised in this kind of spicy barbecue flavor from Hubei. All right, last pieces here at King Wu. Here, I got some beef. Dave, we got the pig trotter. I'm gonna recommend people get the duck necks and the, actually the tofu pea. Okay, here's what I recommend. I recommend getting this beef and you go home and you warm it up. You can put it in soup, grill it a little bit, pan fry it, even microwave it, make it all juicy be perfect to put in some nice beef noodle soup. You hear me? All right, you guys, this is the first round here at Shanghai Deluxe. This is my very first time at this restaurant. Everything on the table right now is under $10. This is $8.95 for the Shanghai Chow Mein. This is $8 for these appetizers. You got bamboo shoots that are marinated, and then you have the cold chicken, and then you have cold sesame noodles for $8.95. Guys, this is the Chow Mein. $8.95. Oh, David, what do you think about the Shanghai Chow Mein with the big noodles? You need a lot of heat to make sure those noodles are cooked all the way through. Coloring is kind of drab, but the flavor is there. If it's a very neutral flavor profile. It's hard to believe that anybody would not like that. This is something that you often do kind of put in your kanji. Mm. I'm a fan of the marinated bamboo shoots. This is the wine chicken, $8.95. This is something I always got to get every Shanghainese spot I go to. Yo, the food here is pretty solid, man. Honestly, it actually like surpassed my expectations. They have some old grandma, um, Shanghainese grandmas in there speaking Shanghainese with each other. That's when I knew it was legit. It's very authentic, guys. Sesame, cold noodles. Have you been surprised at the level of authenticity of the Shanghainese restaurants in Chinatown? Not that they're necessarily what Shanghainese people eat 100%, but they are run by Shanghainese people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's the fanciest Shanghainese restaurants, but absolutely, it feels authentic. I mean, I think uh, especially representative of the time period, you know, when the people came over here. Cold noodles, very more sesame, less peanut buttery. Okay, David, of course, we couldn't come to a Shanghainese restaurant without getting the Shaolong Baos. Here we have the regular pork ones, we got the crab ones, and then we have the Shanghai Shao Mai. Mm. Bro, I will tell you one thing about this restaurant. You got to come here and ask for the chili oil because this chili oil is not regular. It has, I think, dried scallops in it and fried shallots. So it definitely has like another level to the flavor. Crab shallon bao, you can tell by the little orange thing at the top. I'm going to let it bathe. You know what? I definitely noticed that the crab shallon bao is like they put a lot of the roe in there because the juice is so yellow. I would say for me, my two picks go with the uh, Shanghai Chow Mein for $8.95. I would say get the Crab Shaolin Bao, also $8.95. I was impressed by New Shanghai Deluxe. All right, you guys, we are in front of the Tido Tea Shop. 
You guys, this is a Japanese yeah. Taiwanese themed spot. If you guys know about Taiwan, um, it was actually a Japanese colony, I want to say for like a hundred years at some point. Ooh. So there's a lot of Japanese influence in Taiwan. Beautifully wrapped on a giri here. We have the thick toast with what is that furikake and um, pork floss? Yeah, rosong. Wow. Okay, and then here we have uh, what, coconut? Yeah, and coconut condensed milk. Co coconut with condensed milk. Obviously thick toasted Taiwanese toast. I mean, this Bro. is like a classic like thing that people really love to eat in Taiwan. I gotta say, the presentation is incredible, the way he chops it up and then kind of turns it to the side. Taiwanese, Taiwanese toast. These are uh, $4 each, by the way. $4 each. This one tastes like a super decadent and high quality warm version of like the Cantonese Kai Mei Bao, which is the coconut bun. Yeah, yeah, no. The, that's three layers of coconut. No. Yeah. I think the common theme that I've noticed here on Hester Street is, Andrew, people but will bust their ass for an item that's like two to three, four dollars. This is a custom onigiri I have with Japanese sausage, eel, and fermented preserved cucumbers in it. Onigiri. Oh, that was sausage one. I actually really enjoy the cucumber though. Sausage one for me was missing a little bit, but here we have the eel. Probably, you know, based off unagi, if not unagi itself. Andrew, my final takeaway on Tito Tea Shop is it's been around for 11 years. They said they spend a lot of time, they take pride in their work. And they said the proliferation of new boba shops, whether they're from Taiwan or mainland China or the, you know, the hype beast, you know, Asian or Asian American spots, they have hurt their business, but they said ultimately they still have their own crowd. Yo, guys, I remember coming to Tito several years ago on our first time to New York that we really spent like a few, several months out here. And I remember this was, I mean, this is still really good tea. You know what it is? It's almost like a little like Japanese, more influenced small boba stall. I guess that's how I would say it. Kind of reminds you of something you might see in Yokohama, Japan. Or I should say probably like a no, Japan, Taizong, Ta Taipei. Yeah, in Japan's Chinatown or in like maybe Kaohsiung, Taiwan somewhere. All right, you guys, we're at Rung City. This is a Fujianese spot. Andrew, I went to like six, seven other spots on this street. They're pretty much all serving this. This is a very classic um, intestine noodle that they eat in Fujian. Mm. Fuzhou specifically, more by the water, uh -huh. and also Southern Taiwan. Yeah, yeah. And if we're looking at a FJ fish ball, okay. uh, stuff with beef inside, you're gonna go in on the intestine Oh noodles. man, David, you know me, I'm the intestine tripe guy. Not really the intestine guy, more of the tripe guy, let's go. Big bite. Look at this. Biggest bite I've ever done. This is, I'm on Eldridge Street. What better street to do this on? It's not that bad. Like, I think a lot of the time people are like, oh, it's too funky. It has the same texture, but none of the funk, to be honest. There's, there's no, no funk. Oh, you know what? You know what? There's no funk. Mm -mm. There's no funk. You guys, I'm not a big tripe person, which is stomach lining. Intestines is obviously just intestines. Never. Give me a dip. It ain't bad. Maybe some, hey, if that was fried, like some calamari. David, my man's been in business, a business here. You know what it is, Rung City, Eldridge Street, Fujianese Shit. Cheap Eats. Let's go. You guys, we are in Chinatown Cheap Eats Part 7. And uh -huh. one thing I want to do is highlight streets that I think are particularly overlooked because they're more local, not really oriented for tourists. And Hester Street is one of them, especially the side that is closer to the park and more into the LES side. Um, right here, we're on Hester and Christie and basically across from the famous Kung Fu tea that everybody gets uh, boba from. That was the original boba shop. Before yeah. there's, now there's like 40 of them. Hey, but we're in front of a spot that actually has switched concepts and switched restaurants quite a few times in the past five years. All right, so I met the owner. He's from Fujian. Andrew, he called it one cup tea, Ebay cha. That is the direct translation. Yep, boy cha. All right, my man Wilson made this fresh and on the cup it says best drink within 15 minutes. They even give you the time of how fast you should drink this because in 15, 
it, the, the texture will change and it'll feel a little bit different and it won't be the best product oh, possible. Oh, especially watermelon. Yeah. That is true, watermelon, it's a little bit like a tamaki hand roll, you gotta eat it quick. All right, so he told me he had the fresh avocados imported from California. Wow. I believe him. You know, I would say that one cup tea is totally solid. I'll say this about one cup tea. Low key, surprisingly good quality. All right, everybody, we've gotten here to Silk Road Cafe. This has been in Chinatown. It's been a staple for 15 years. Here you can get a mixture of coffee and tea and even some snacks, which I got. So here is their very nice uh, mocha latte um, here for $4. Obviously, you know, mocha latte, everybody's had one, but let's see how it's different because they, they really did recommend this one to me. Very deep cocoa flavor, I wanna say, it feels a little bit more like dark chocolate, which is different. But this one, of course, it being a Chinese tea spot, this one's different because this is actually, let me get the whole name for you, dried date long on and wolfberry tea. So dried date long on and wolfberry tea. There's even goji berries in it too. Okay, tea. It, it actually doesn't taste as medicinal and rooty as I thought, you know, with like, you know, like the ginseng root, it's not like that. It's more a little bit like slightly sweet, um, but overall, man, it really feels like something like your grandmother or like my dad who's really into like making soups and, and tonics would be into. Little toasted ham and cheese sandwich, guys. Very basic kind of Hong Kong style square bread. Tastes exactly like an Egg McMuffin. Yo, D. This tastes like an Egg McMuffin. You're saying there's Egg McMuffin-like sandwiches at Silk Road Cafe. Bro, Egg McMuffin vibes, I'm telling you. Vibes. <laughs> <laughs> it is, right? Guys, they also have uh, chicken dumplings. Anytime I get the chance to try high quality chicken dumplings, I'm always gonna try them because chicken is not really a thing that, you know, goes in dumpling a lot, so. This food tastes like homemade food, guys. Come to Silk Road, get your interesting Chinese teas, get your mocha lattes, and get some homemade tasting snacks. As you can see inside of the Ajisen, Andrew, they actually have Gokus, they have Final Fantasy VII figurines, or, you know, all types of otaku type things. This is really interesting, Andrew, because we're looking at a Tom Yum chicken ramen. This is a gyudon, this is sliced beef, and of course you have the teriyaki chicken. Um, I think they're right outside of what we consider a cheap beef, but they're still possibly in there. You know what, this is a cheap beef for Japanese food. It actually tastes like an elevated mama's Thai noodle. Okay, look at that beef, it looking juicy. Let's go. So this teriyaki chicken looks a little bit more like the hibachi ones that you would get at like a Benihana's or you know, any of those. Solid, very solid, but come and get the ramen. This is good. All right, you guys, there was a snowstorm last night. We're on Baxter, but guess what? The economy doesn't stop. Small businesses needing help doesn't stop. Delicious food doesn't stop. Cheap Chinatown Eats Part 7 doesn't stop. So let's head into Break Room. Break Room was the first spot opened up by second generation Chinese Americans in Chinatown to sort of provide tacos, burgers, non-traditional ones, but still very delicious ones to the community because they just wanted to have something here growing up that wasn't like Chinatown food and that's totally, ain't nothing wrong with that, as long as it tastes good. All right, we got our food here at Break Room, and it is the most outrageous food you can get in Chinatown. Here are the Break Room fries. It's a mixture of fries and tots. You got jalapenos, you got egg, you got cheese, you got bacon and pork belly. And it's just, uh, I mean, for $10, that's a lot of food. That's a heavy weight right there, let me tell you that. Here, we have the tempura shrimp tacos. You know, it's kind of like your classic kind of Baja style shrimp tacos, except with a slight Asian twist with the tempura batter. It's pretty much got everything you can imagine, egg, uh, tempura, battered onion ring, okay, fatty patty, okay, grilled onions, uh, jalapeno, tomato, and lettuce. Let me cut that in half for you guys, so you guys can just see the glory. Wow. Pork belly is in there too. All right, I'm gonna do a quick taste test. This is the break room burger. Honestly, I'm gonna give this burger four out of five, man. That was actually, it was good. All right, tempura fish taco. Yo, nice little Asian flavor kick right there with the tempura and a little bit of the spicy mayo. All right, these are the outrageous break room fries. You might've seen them on Instagram. They have everything in them. Let's go. Guys, I say come to break room and, and try the food out here. It's a lot of food for the price. So it's a great deal, but I would say personally, go with the burger here, the break room burger. Hi, my name is Veronica Gan. I'm from Kui Cafe. Today's special, we have uh, ayam rendang. That's a uh, uh, 
uh, lamb leaf, uh, chicken, curry chicken with the blue pea flower and my kueh set. We have the salty coconut with the pandan custard. All right, guys, if you guys want some really home style, homemade style Malaysian food, you got to come to Kueh Cafe. Right here, I got the ayam rendang for $10. They do different sets every week. every week. <laughs> so you gotta stay up on their Instagram, guys. This is Kuwait Cafe, another cheapie in Chinatown. And you know 10 Run is super, super legit because not only do they have their own boba shop, but right next door they got their tea and ginseng company right here where, you know, they farm their own teas, their own ginseng. It's not on some kitty boba stuff. All right, you guys, we are at Ten Run, and this is one of the original boba chains in America. It's actually one of the original tea brands in the world. So here I have the black sugar oolong. This is the thing that is supposed to like rival tiger sugar, which actually doesn't have any tea in it. Well, I think that their whole thing was like, all right, everybody wants to do this like black sugar cream thing. We're gonna do that, give you a little bit of the trendy thing, but we're kind of traditionalists at our core. We're gonna hit you with the oolong, you know, some real tea leaves. I have a... Uh, ginger tea, ginger milk tea right here too. That is a very traditional flavor with the ginger in there. The tiger sugar is more for the young generation. This is definitely for a mature taste bud. Um, I would say aesthetically, it's not on the same level, but quality wise, I like my tea. Do you prefer it? I don't eat, I don't drink that much tiger sugar. It's very sweet. It's very sweet and this is just less sweet. So if you're a traditionalist, you know, 10 run is always a good choice, but if you want to be on the new wave, I mean, you got to get Tiger Sugar. You know what I noticed is the 10 runs in LA are a little bit more modernized than the 10 runs on the East Coast. I mean, we're right next to their like traditional tea shop right here, where it looks like it's from like a thousand years ago. 10 run tea time. All right, so that does it for part seven. Did you make it to this point? And if you did, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching this series. And we already have a part eight in the works. As we said before, it's not just about us eating lunch and trying food because maybe not all of the dishes are fire. We really wanna showcase the range of food and prices in the neighborhood, um, show you some hidden gems. We wanna introduce to you owners and personalities. And you know, at the end of the day, we gotta support local businesses. So thank you so much for watching and be on the lookout for the next one.